Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming major winter storm for portions of the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and portions of the interior Northeast. We're also going to be going over some late-term patterns that I've been looking at that have been indicating somewhat of a colder start to December and potentially lingering into parts of January. We'll talk about that as well, and we'll also talk about the current ongoing snowfall threat for portions of the Great Lakes and that general region because of how much lake effect snow is going through the area so here is the current national weather service page by the way we'll look at both the gfs and the european model when we're this uh, when we're talking about uh this uh upcoming major winter storm so here's the current national weather service page we have winter weather advisories for portions of michigan uh pennsylvania and upstate new york we have some freeze warnings in effect for portions of alabama georgia and north carolina there as well as some freeze watches in effect for eastern north carolina with some frost advisories in effect for central Georgia. We also see some wind advisories, high wind warnings, and all of that going on in high wind watches as well for portions of South Dakota, Wyoming, Nevada, California, Oregon, and Washington. We also see some winter storm warnings in effect for portions of California and Idaho with some winter weather advisories further to the south of there. So that wraps it up for the National Weather Service page. Now, here's a look at the current radar, and this is just uh, accurate weather is uh, basically taking the uh, the radar uh, indications from all the National Weather Service radar sites and then basically just using temperature profiling to turn it into a rain and snow map uh, and this is the best resource I could find for rain and snow uh, but basically we have a lot of snow going on through portions of the interior northeast and moving through portions of the Great Lakes right now and I just wanted to point this out because I know a lot of uh, my viewers are from some of these regions. Uh, so definitely, if you guys are seeing snow by this point, let me know down in the comments uh, and tell me how much you've seen already. And by the way, we have some lingering moisture along this region and overnight temperatures will fall into the 20s. So if this moisture is still lingering, which that wind is still going to be coming out of the northwest by that point, you might see uh, some snow showers overnight. We'll still have to see about that. So that's your radar picture. Picture. Now, let's start talking about that cold air later on, and then we'll get into that major winter storm. So, this is the GFS 10 millibar uh, high uh, temperatures, uh, and it's basically showing you how below or above normal it's, it is in the upper parts of the atmosphere. Now, this is uh, between 92,000 and 105,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So this is very, very high up in the atmosphere. And usually when you see those darker blues, that's indicating that you have cold air overhead. So this isn't necessarily going to translate down to the surface, but it's just something that we have to keep in mind. Now, this is indicating where the polar vortex is and where it's centered. That polar vortex by this point is centered over the Arctic Circle, kind of like what we saw uh, with last winter where it stayed over this region there's not a lot of indications that it'll stay over this region when the polar vortex uh, sort of moves south or it moves north that's indicating that you're going to see some sort of cold air movement away from the arctic circle and down to portions of uh, let's say the united states or southern canada that general region so let's play this through so this would be an analysis of what what's the current uh the current uh 10 millibar height anomalies are and then here would be by November 27th. Now you're starting to see a drastic shift. We see this elongation of this uh, of this polar vortex. It's now kind of an oval shape, uh, and it's now moving into northern Canada, and it's also pushing into Siberia. So now you're seeing that cold air uh, kind of all the way through the western United States, western Canada, and moving into portions of northern Europe. And then let's play this out all the way through. This is on the GFS model, and this is not just one model run. I could show you maybe 10 or 12 different model runs that show the exact same thing you start to see that cold air move into the eastern uh, United States now this is a about one to two week in a lagging indicator so what this basically means is that it's gonna lag about one to two weeks so right now this would be December 3rd it's looking at that cold air moving into the central United States that's maybe gonna happen right around the 15th or 16th and stay for about two three four five six weeks at a time for some region so this is gonna be just something that I'm going to be taking into account when I update my winter forecast for the last time and when I make my December forecast because there are some early early indications that this could turn out to be snowier and colder than what we are originally thinking. Now, 
Here is the uh, current GFS run, then we'll look at the European model, and let's start talking about this big uh, winter storm that we have on our hands. So, this would be by uh, this would be by Friday evening, uh, and this would be, I believe, right around 5 p.m. Mountain Time or so. We're looking at some scattered rain and snow showers for portions of the Rockies, and let's just play this through through the day on Saturday, and it really starts to organize itself as we get to the morning hours on Saturday. So, right around 5 to 6 a.m., depending on whether you're mountain time or central time at this point and we're looking at some general uh, scattered thunderstorm activity through the central United States some rain and snow mixing as you get further to the west nearing the Rockies uh, let's switch over to what the eastern United States shows because this is going to give us a better perspective we're now starting to see some of that rain and snow mixing uh, four portions of the upper Midwest and getting back through the central and northern plains as we get to Saturday right around 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time and we're looking at some of that heavier rain kind of in a band from Michigan to Kansas and Colorado and then we have some snow just uh, scattered in between there. It will be a fairly warm day ahead of this front. You might even see some scattered thunderstorm activity really throughout this region. Uh, so you will have that warm air coming out of the south but you will also have that cold air uh, coming out of the northeast generally uh, kind of like this. So you will have some cold air trying to push into this uh, region. You also have this high pressure that's bringing in some cold air, uh, kind of like this. So you will have some temporary cold air in the northeast that will eventually uh, start to move out. But this high pressure will move back to the north and still bring in some more cold air on the back side of the system. So that will really help the system get going and show a lot more snow. Here would be by uh, Sunday, uh, right around midnight. So Saturday night into Sunday morning, November 22nd. So we're only a couple days away from Thanksgiving by this point, And we're dealing with that really warm flow as we get into the Tennessee Valley, the Mississippi River Valley. But then as you get further to the north, you start to turn back into a north uh, northwesterly flow. And you start to get into a bit more of a chillier pattern. And as we continue forward, you start to see that low pressure is elongated over portions of Illinois and Missouri. You see some rain showers uh, behi uh, behind that system. So you are seeing a lagging cold front uh, that's kind of sitting somewhat like this. You have cold air again behind here, warm air uh, pretty much all ahead of that region. We're also starting to see a little bit uh, less mixing through the northern side of the system, but still you could see a couple of snow showers mixed in here. Uh, and the GFS has been actually quite accurate with these snowstorms so far. So I'm going to be more inclined to trust this model than the European model which hasn't handled these systems quite as well. Now here to be by Sunday right around noon time so 12 p.m. Uh, uh, this, this would be central time so 12 p.m. central time November 22nd uh, and we're looking at that cold front still moving through the central United States snow on the northern side of that uh, system as we continue forward, it starts to pull out of here. You get back into that southwesterly uh, flow from much of the eastern third of the United States. Cold air back on the western end of the system. And then we go into a much calmer period after that with where that uh, rain band just kind of moves through on Wednesday through the eastern seaboard. And it's pretty much all said and done with as we get to midnight on Tuesday. Now here would be what the European model is showing just to give you a quick little uh, a different perspective on what happening. Uh, both the GFS and the Canadian model really agree with this, so I am seeing a little bit more uh, agreement within those two models, so I'm going to be a little bit more uh, favoring those two models. My official snowfall forecast will probably be out either by tomorrow or Thursday, depending on how uh, on how uh, how much I'm trusting these models so far, and how much these models change overnight. Now, here would be by uh, Saturday morning, November 21st, and as we're continuing forward, you start to see that front start to set up over the central plains. Now, we're seeing that main low pressure system still out in Colorado, but as you continue forward, that rain band only increases and that rain shield only increases. Now, something that we're going to want to uh, keep in uh, keep in mind is that this 32 degree line is this red line right here. So this is the freezing line is to the north of there and that below freeze or those above freezing temperatures are to the south of there. So that's just something that you want to keep in mind. That's generally your rain snow divider for most systems. Now we're seeing uh, some mixing of rain and snow push through portions of Michigan and Minnesota. Uh, we're starting to see this secondary low pressure system want to form off into the upper 
Midwest, but we're still seeing that stalling front move through the central United States, and this will actually dump maybe two to three inches of rain in some of these regions. And as we continue forward, it's really a fairly fast-moving system according to what the European model is showing, pretty much getting done with as we're getting to Monday, uh, where most of that rain or snow, depending on exactly where you live, is moving through. Uh, and then that front is just going to push through as we get through the day on Monday, and it's going to break off uh, as we get to Tuesday. And it's, again, pretty much all said and done with as we get to Tuesday, and then we head into a calmer pattern. Now, here's what the European model is showing. Quite a lot for Michigan, uh, but the surrounding area is not seeing too much. That's unlike what the GFS is showing, which, where it's showing a little bit more snowfall. It's showing maybe a dusting to two inches or three inches in some portions of Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin, with some higher amounts again in northern Michigan. The highest certainty that I've been seeing is over this area in interior northern Michigan, getting a decent two to three inches in most model runs. Even the European, the GFS, and the Canadian model all agree on that the least certainty is going to be pretty much everywhere else in this storm this is a very uncertain storm kind of this region is our most uncertain region we really don't know whether this will transition to rain or snow uh, and just to give you another perspective here's what the canadian model is showing and it's a little bit more robust on the uh closer to iowa minnesota and wisconsin uh it's also a little bit more robust as we get to northern michigan but it's not showing as much for nebraska kansas south dakota that general region so there's still a lot that we have to find out with the system i will be up uh, i will be uh, making again my personal and official snowfall forecast as we get to wednesday or thursday uh, so tomorrow or thursday i'm not quite sure uh depends whether or not i'm fairly certain on how this storm will play out and i'm leaning more towards putting it out on thursday also, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I at least heart all your comments. If you're just leaving a statement or you're just saying uh, something in the comment section, it's not really a question. I'll just leave a heart on your comment just to show you that I at least saw it. Uh, but if you have a question, I pretty much answer all of those questions uh, Those questions down in the comments. If I don't respond to your question within about four or five hours, uh, that means I probably didn't see it. So I would send it in another comment thread and it'll refresh it. It'll Give me a new notification on youtube and i'll go in and i ch and i'll check that so uh, again if you did enjoy the video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye